Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Hot off the press, news from Gibson today, January 9th, 2020. They have announced the new Slash Signature Collection that they plan to debut at Winter NAM 2020. They've partnered once again with their global brand ambassador, Slash, to create six signature guitars. Now, of those six are two distinct models. Four of them are Les Pauls, and two are brand new Slash acoustic guitars, his first ones ever. So let's talk about these Les Pauls first. Spec-wise, they're rocking AAA flame tops with solid mahogany bodies, Slash signature C-shaped neck profile with hand-wired electronics and orange drop caps. Huh, does that sound familiar? This is basically an original collection 50s Les Paul standard. But what they've done here is they've swapped the pickups out for something similar, but they gave them a new name. These are called the Slashbucker pickup. These also make use of the Alnico 2 magnets, very similar to his Seymour Duncan signature set, the Alnico 2 Pros. Other than that, some features that make these things interesting is they've moved Scully from the front side of the headstock to the back side of the headstock. That's something that a lot of people did not like about some of his Slash signature guitars that just liked the guitars for what they were. They weren't necessarily Slash fans. So now they have it on the back of the headstock. At the time of press release, there are zero photos of that. I'm hoping it's just a little small thing at the back of the headstock, kind of like this Custom Shop Edition decal. And the only other thing that says slash on this guitar is the truss rod cover. But they're also going to ship you a blank truss rod cover in the case, once again, just like the original collection, as well as string the guitar with Slash's new signature Ernie Ball strings. And I really like this touch. I mean, it's very cheap and inexpensive for Gibson to do this, but they're giving you Slash signature picks. Don't lose these picks or your collector value's out the window. <laughs> but these are the Dunlop Tortex picks. So spec-wise, these things sound pretty good, don't they? Now let's get to the four colors. This, this is where Gibson has upset me a little bit. I mean, I'm not furious with them, but it kind of hurts me a bit as a collector to have to go over this and explain it to somebody who won't quite understand why I'm upset. So here's the four new colors. You get a green burst, kind of like a sunburst color, a yellowish guitar, and a red burst color. Two of these finishes have been done before as Slash Signature guitars, and I view these as ripoffs and an insult to collectors who bought the limited edition runs. One of them is kind of a half reissue, and one of them I am super excited for. So let's do the ones that are making me upset first. Starting with Appetite Burst. When I think about Slash, this is one of the first guitars that comes to my mind. I think these zebra bobbin pickups with this kind of yellowish plain looking finish that has tons of flame on it. And these were first done in 2010 in three different runs. There was two from the custom shop and one from Gibson USA. The USA lineup produced 600 of them. The custom shop produced 100 aged and signed versions, and then there were 300 in vintage original spec. For a total of 1,000 of these limited edition guitars to be made. Since the new Slash collection is from the Gibson USA lineup, we can only compare it to the USA one. The biggest difference here is you've got the Scully on the face of the headstock of the 2010 run versus it being on the back of these new ones. Something else that'll be different is you're probably going to have that faux ABR1 bridge on this new series, whereas this older one utilized the Nashville style. The second finish that I'm the most upset about is seeing Anaconda burst again. And the reason why this one particularly makes me upset is because they've already done this once before. In 2017, the Gibson Custom Shop produced 25 of these with a flame top that were signed by Slash, 25 with a plain top signed by Slash, and 250 in an unsigned plain top version. But then in 2018, they followed up that run based off of the success of that with a USA lineup one. I always think that's a low move when they do that, when they market it as a limited edition thing, but I mean, it kind of made sense. And they did limit it to 450 in production for the USA ones. But here we are, 2020, they are now a bunch of these Anaconda Bursts. And this time the specs don't appear to be that different. It's mainly just gonna come down to you have the new Slash Buckers instead of the Seymour Duncans. And now let's move on to this one. It is being called November Burst. This is the one that I consider a halfway new guitar because it's very similar to one of his first signature guitars from 2004. 
it looked like this and there were 1200 of them made. But the biggest difference here is it actually had a piezo bridge on it so you could get acoustic guitar sounds out of it. But you're also going to notice this one is a plain top whereas the new one is specced out at a AAA flame. So that one's different enough that I'm not upset about it. It's kind of a new welcomed edition that feels very slashy, but isn't infringing on any collectors out there. And now this one. Yes, I'm so excited for this one. We're going to have a full review and demo. I just know it because it's the only one out of the three that I need to document. This guitar is being called Vermilion Burst. I've kind of been following the developments of this one because I initially thought it was going to be a custom shop run that would be super limited, kind of like the Slash EDS 1275. But the more photos I saw of Slash playing this thing on stage, the closer I would look at this, the more and more it looked like a USA Les Paul standard. So when I saw this get released, it's like, yes, that's confirmation. I knew it. I knew it. It was initially going to be called Bolivian Dream playing off the Brazilian Dream Les Paul. Essentially, it just had a Bolivian rosewood fretboard instead of Brazilian rosewood. Now, it's possible they might follow this up with a custom shop version of this guitar, which is probably what we're going to see happen. And despite the name being Vermilion Burst, it's not like the Slash Vermilion right here from 2013. It's not really like the Rosso Corsa either. It's kind of like a combination between the two with a dark edge border. This actually most closely resembles an old finish called Dark Wine Burst from the 90s. It also looks very similar to the Black Widow Les Paul. So I am super excited for that one. I'm going to pre-order it as soon as possible. And even though I'm a little bit upset with Gibson about the other ones not being 100% unique and original, they're going to sell these things like hotcakes. It's just going to be ridiculous how they can't keep these things in stock, I bet. Because the used market on these limited edition models is crazy high. So actually being able to buy these things brand new, I think it's going to keep that in check a little bit. But before we talk pricing and speculation, let's go ahead and cover the new J45s. And these are what these guys are looking like. You have the November Burst and Vermilion Burst, which I'm really happy they put Vermilion Burst on the J45 and just let the other finishes kind of go. But you know, it would be really cool to see one of these decked out in the AFD format and put a maple top on it. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Maybe as a limited edition, but these are the first ever Slash signature acoustic guitars. I thought that was interesting. The Slash specs to these guys are that once again, a rounded C neck profile shape with a 16 inch fretboard radius and the LR Bags VTC pickup system. These are also going to have the Scully on the back as well as the Slash signature on the truss rod cover, but they're going to come with all that other stuff too, the picks as well as the blank truss rod cover. I don't think these come with his signature Ernie Ball strings though because eh, they're acoustic guitars. I really don't see myself buying one of these to review and demo because eh, acoustics just don't perform very well on this channel. So now the big question, how much is one of these things going to cost you? Unfortunately, nobody knows at this time. But here's my best educated guess. A 50 standard from the original collection retails at $2,499. Once you add the Slash affiliation with these with his signature pickups, I'm hoping for a $2,999 retail price because these do not seem like a limited edition run. They're just going to make as many as will sell for as long as they care to. That's the way it seems at press release time. I mean, this stuff can change day to day. So, so definitely check the description for any updates. But if we're being realistic here, it's Gibson. This is a cash cow product for them. We all know it's going to be $34.99. They're going to put a $1,000 price hike on these. And I've been on all the online articles trying to find something official, but Reverb never posted a price. Guitar.com never posted a price. Premier Guitar never posted a price. But... I did find one article that I think accidentally leaked the price of these things. And I say accidentally leaked because I've been getting a bunch of companies wanting to sponsor episodes of new products coming out. And in big, bold print, they say, do not talk about the price. <laughs> so I think musicradar.com accidentally let this slip out. I believe they're based in the UK, so these prices are in pounds. So for the Les Paul standards, they're listing at 2,599 quid, 
which is roughly 3,400 US dollars. So that lines up perfectly with what I thought the upper registers of these would be. And then I was shocked at the J45 price. It's more expensive than the Les Paul? That makes no sense to me. But that one's clocking in at 2,999 quid which is roughly $3,900. So yeah, $3,500 and about $4,000 for these. That is a lot of money for a USA leveled guitar, but they're just gonna sell these things because they're affordable slash models. <laughs> as weird as it sounds to say something that's $3,500 is affordable. So my biggest complaint about this is they have pretty much doomed the used market for the old slash signatures. If you wanted a Slash Signature guitar, you had to pay out the nose for the limited editions. But that's no longer the case. The original ones will always have a certain collectible value to them, so they're not just gonna plummet and never come back. But if you have one and you're in the flipping game, get rid of that thing as soon as possible, because I definitely see the prices of them starting to come down in order to adjust for these new ones coming to the market. But at the same time, I think in the future, since there's gonna be billions of these things out there, that it might make the original runs slightly more collectible in the future. So I hope this helps you understand the new 2020 Slash collection from Gibson. How do you feel about this new run? Do you feel betrayed as a collector or are you excited to get your hands on a new Slash LP? Leave your answer down in the comment section below and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.